It's a cool summer morning in Yellowstone National Park, and this bison herd has just finished its breakfast and is laying down to chew through its cud. My name is George Buman, and I'll be sharing with you some thoughts on sculpting these creatures from life. Above all, it's important to observe, whether it's through a spotting scope like I'm using here, a pair of binoculars, or just your own two eyes. All the information that we're able to gather is going to feed directly into the sculptures that we're able to produce. Look at the movement, look at landmarks of anatomy, and then change positions. It's often helpful to study animals in a herd setting like this because you get to see multiple angles at any one time. You also get to see members of different sex and age classes as well as a lot of different behaviors. From lying down, standing up, feeding, and also getting up and stretching their legs. But for our sculpture project here we're going to start simple and that's going to mean with a cow bison who's lying down stationary. At the outset do your best to select one view alone say profile and then use your observations to carefully delineate how the various elements of your subject relate to one another. For instance what is the highest point on this bison's body? It's its back. Middle point from side to side of the creature. Also note that that side to side middle line is also lining up with the elbow as well as the tip of that hind foot that's stretched forward. Consider simple shapes that might frame your subject nicely. In this case, a right triangle works well, with the small tail end of the bison being contrasted against the higher, deeper end toward the head and shoulders. Work out as many of these sorts of relationships as you can because what it will ultimately give you is a mental road map to the way a bison looks and it will guide your hands as you begin to apply clay. Make every effort to record as many of those large observations of relationships that you can. In this case I'm keeping in mind that triangular form that leads up the back toward the hump and the head. A good rule of thumb is to observe slowly, thoroughly, and then sculpt quickly. Record as many of those observations as you can in that clay before you then start looking at the subject again. You need to approach the subject with questions. How far forward is the knee, or that leg, or that hoof? Exercise as much of your memory as possible, and what you'll find over time is that your visual memory will improve in this respect. In the past I've half jokingly referred to this method of study as uploading and downloading. Uploading being spending quality time watching and observing and then downloading that information into a clay model or a drawing. Also note that as I'm working on this sculpture I'm editing. I'm making choices about what I find important and perhaps less important. I've chosen to lift the head above that high point of the back line to represent more of what I feel about the animal. I want a sense of relaxed alertness. Relaxed being conveyed by that long stretched out hind leg but the alertness conveyed by the sense of her head being raised a little bit higher than that level line of the back. After about an hour of watching and two hours of sculpting, this is what I've come up with. It's a good start, and I'm pretty happy with the way it conveys my feelings about the animal. It sets the stage for the next session and the next layer of details. Plus, as you might see in the background, my subjects have gotten up and walked away. <laughs>